decided I wanted to go to China. You know, most people called me the China guy. Like, <laughs> I know, like most of my friends stopped me in China. Along the way, you know, during the process, when we were almost at the climax of the process, my parents were like, no, we can't go to China, you know. First, a couple of months into our first semester in first year, the great battle, internal battle set in where I had to battle whether to be a forestry student or a neurosurgeon. I had this strange feeling that the Lord wanted me to be a neurosurgeon. Yet, I felt God made me happy in forestry. You know, and I hate to have a double mind, you know. I wanted to focus in forestry, but it was forestry, and I wanted to focus on medicine, but it was medicine. So I kept praying on to God. It was a week of battle, and I felt like God wasn't speaking, and I had to battle it alone. But me coming into forestry wasn't something normal. I knew God had His hands in this, and praying, 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 praying. To God, that God is it forestry that you want me to do? Then please let me do it. And if it is medicine, then please give me a medicine and let forestry go away. And of course, medicine did go away. And I became the happiest student again in forestry. Very happy, you know. I became the happiest student again in forestry. So I was pretty much good, you know. Everything was going on well. And then it sets in again. And this time I knew that God wanted me to go in medicine. And this was the time for me to go into medicine. Yeah, this is how I ended up in forestry. You know, in SHS, like since SHS one, you know, people will come from me in there, from China, and they will introduce their universities to us. You know, we are all gathered in the assembly hall, like after lunch and they will talk about their schools, like their universities, and trying to encourage people to come and pursue programs in their universities. So I was always like fascinated about China, going to China. At first I wanted to go to India, but later on I decided I wanted to go to China. You know, most people called me the China guy. Like, <laughs> I know, like most of my friends still being in China, even coming to this school. I was in the bus and I was making a video of myself and they thought I was in a plane going to China and <laughs> just going to pursue my engineering. Most of my friends knew I wanted to be an engineer. You know, during the SHS, the whole of SHS from grade 10 to grade 12, I never I never thought of like medicine or anything, just like I said. It was only physics, 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 becoming an engineer. That was what I was concerned with. So after SHS, I was only focused, even before completing. I had the opportunity with an admission consultant, a consultant with the CGA, China Global Admissions. You know, some way or the other, we became like friends in a way, you know. And even till now, we are still friends. And, um, we began our process with me schooling in the US, and even before I completed, my parents had already bought my application forms for schools in Ghana, like two schools in Ghana, Kiel University, where I currently reading my first degree degree. And, also in uh, UMAT, yes, University of Mines and Technology, yeah. And I was on this process after high school, trying to get into China. And along the way, you know, during the process, when we were almost at the climax of the process, my parents were like, no, we can't go to China, you know. Like, we don't know anybody there and uh, you can go and stay there by yourself. So are you gonna come back during vacation? Are you gonna stay there? In my case, you know, um, those reasons were not very tangible, and my parent of all wouldn't give such reasons, but we're giving such reasons, and it looked like I had no way to leave Ghana for China because they were those sponsoring me, they were those taking care of me, and I would lock myself in the room, and they'll be like, So, won't you focus on your application here in Ghana? And I never mind them, I'll never eat, I'll be in my room. I remember they calling us of a school teacher into our home. And I still didn't want to come out, but I had to come out, you know, I, don't, I didn't want to ruin my reputation, you know. Yeah, so the kind of respect, I'm, I'm just kidding, I, you know, just giving him some respect. So I came out and he would also talk about, you know, please, school in Ghana, you know, just focus on your application. And I'll be like, no, 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 if this, what are you going to talk about? And I'm going back to my room. After explaining everything, but I wasn't that rude, you know, but... I just be like, while we're talking, I'll be like, say, please, no, I'm not going to do that. And I'll end up in my room again, I'll lock myself. And I realize I was losing two things, that is, 
my admission here in Ghana and also my admission in China. You know, there's no way I'm going to China, so I've got to focus on my admission here. And here I had applied for mechanical engineering and the rest, you know. When I finally decided that I would, I would like pursue engineering here in Ghana, I checked my portal and it looks like all the spaces have been filled. I was two two weeks late and I remember going to my, print my acceptance letter for forestry. The one I went to him was like, you're very late and if, if you were my child, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lash you. He was like, he would penalize me and I just laughed because no, there's no way, you know my dad and how can you penalize me? My dad even is not gonna do that. So yeah, that was it by the way. So just trying to tell you that I was kind of late with admissions and when I opened my phone finally to check if I had a program, you know, I had lost it. I had lost it. But rather they gave it to me as a fee paying student, you know. They have a set and uh, like a set of people, I mean, they said they are taking 200 people like maybe per year for mechanical engineering class and those who don't meet, you know, those who are not part of the 200 yet qualified with their grades to become mechanical engineering students are uh, regarded as not regular students but as fee paying students where you pay more than your colleagues, you know, because the government's equipment might not be enough for you, even though when they get the money, they are not going to buy new equipment. Yeah, so you can see you're still going to share the what the government provided, you know, like as African mentality, you know. It was just by the way. And my dad was like, you know, let's go. You know, my mates were paying less than 2000 but I was to pay 9000 And I was like, no, dad, no. My dad was like, we should go pursue the engineering and they're gonna pay for it. And I said, no, I'm not gonna pay like nine times what my mates are paying, so I'm not gonna do that. And at that time, I never knew I had forestry, you know, it hadn't shown. So about, I think, a few hours later on, when I was in my room, I know by mistake I ended up, I know how I ended up going to see the limited vacancy, but I ended up like during in my application portal, something appeared called a limited vacancy and I tapped on it and it opened and I was given three courses to and three programs to choose from to read in the university. And the first one was business, like in a business field, business administration, and the second one was political science. And come on, I'm a scientist, I'm not a business person, I'm an arts person. So the third one, which was forest resources technology and usually shot in as forestry. When I saw it first, I didn't know about it, so you know, I just had to research about it. And when I was reading about forest resources technology or forestry, I became so like, wow. Oh. I think the Lord directed me to this. I like it, you know. I love, I loved like nature. I just love nature. Like, aside loving animals and all those things, you know, forestry, we don't deal much with like the animals or anything, but more about nature and conservation and also about the climate and, you know, and just like this decade is that the UN decade of ecosystem restoration, you know, making the natural resource scientists like the most important until. COVID came in and you know the medical, the healthcare field you know also became number one you know like with natural resource scientists so I pretty much liked it and I wanted to do it I was just hoping to know why the Lord sent me into forestry instead of engineering because I thought that he wanted me to be an engineer so I was like later on I found out that all I was thinking about you know fixing machines and making robots god was thinking about me fixing the planet and so that ideology that i had about me fixing the planet instead of machines like make me very happy i became the happiest student in forestry but alongside it where you know i was joining clubs i was joining global clubs like global landscapes forum gaia community like international organizations and a few of natural resources so i was pretty good you know my mate will be like, I'm just reading a you know, class page and somebody will be asking about career in forestry and people will be like, no, you gotta go to Enoch, you gotta go to Enoch. You know, he is so much like into that stuff. Yes, of course, you know, I was always researching about forestry and all like the stuffs about career and all the opportunities, the master's degree program and PhD degree program in forestry. And I was, I would say I was the happiest student like 
in the universe. Actually, I was very happy because I was very thankful to God that it's something that I never expected. That he brought my way and I knew one thing, like you, I'm gonna bring it later on. You can understand how I got to know how um, God, you know, brought me into forestry, why he brought me into forestry. Um, fast forward, I think in the first, a couple of months into our first semester in first year, the great battle, internal battle was set in where I had to battle whether to be a forestry student or a neurosurgeon. I had this strange feeling that the Lord wanted me to be a neurosurgeon, yet I felt God made me happy in forestry. You know, I know how it came about. Before we, before we um, enrolled, I was to enroll in 6th September, but on 2nd September we had left our home to around the school area. You know, my aunties were staying around the school, so we went to stay with them for a week until the 6th September. But on the 2nd September, when we came to my auntie's place, my dad and I went to visit his mom in a town about an hour away from where my aunt lived. And we went to the village. And while we were approaching my grandma's mini hut, you know, there was a lady sitting in front of her door and this lady never responded to anything that anybody said to her. She was quiet, doing her own things, writing on the floor and I was like, Grammy, why is she like this? And she was she was like um, she fell down during her menstrual period. Fell down during her menstrual period. Sorry guys, I didn't want to mention that, but I know how that is related with science, but that is what she told me, you know, that she fell down during her menstrual I think uh, menstruation or let me say her period yes and um, I don't know she she went not or yes like she became like that like not responding to people wasn't social doing stuff that normal people wouldn't do and all I was thinking about is while we were sitting there waiting when I was waiting for my dad you know my dad was with his mom talking and I was just sitting down looking at her and all that I was thinking about is if I was a neurosurgeon Actually, I didn't mention neurosurgeon, but I was just talking about brain surgeon. I was like, if I was a brain surgeon, I would have digged into her head, like her head, and you know, fix her up. Because actually, I could say that because, like, I knew, you know, more about the brain. I knew that these actions were pertaining to the brain because, in this sense, I was reading more about the brain, just like I told you initially. And I was just looking at her, saying that. If I was a brain surgeon, I was going to fix her up. You know, I pitied her because ladies like her in my community back in a uh, city in Accra, about five hours away from where we were, you know, they are always striving with their lives, making, you know, fighting to get good grades, not only good grades, but to gain more knowledge and, you know, to become valuable people in society and also to harness their God given talent to, you know, serve humanity to God's glory. But her life was paused just because of something that could have been fixed if I was a brain surgeon. So I kept saying that, saying that, thinking about that, and even when I came to school and fast forward, I forgot about that for, you know, for some time. After some time, I forget about that. And it said in all of a sudden, when I was very happy in forestry, I was happy I was going to be the next CEO in Forestry Commission of Ghana and Forestry Commission of Germany, you know, like our faculty is you know, we're associated with some institutions in Germany, so they come here to give us scholarships, you know, like the DAAD scholarships. Like I found one article that says 80% of Germans, like Germany's um, economies like, largely depends on forestry. So I was pretty much good and I was pretty much sure that um, I'm gonna end up in Germany after my forestry degree. So I was very happy, but all of a sudden this dawned on me and it overshadowed me. I was afraid about what was happening like I had this strange feeling about going into neurosurgery and I started watching things like about the brain again just like in SHS and I came across Ben Carson and I watched Ben Carson and I was like God you brought this my way and you trying to tell me something Ben Carson sharing a story about how you know he became a neurosurgeon and how he was it looks like our childhood was almost similar like you know everything about Ben Carson our ideologies about the world it looks very similar so I became fascinated like about I mean I found it fascinating the ideas of Ben Carson and the life story about Ben Carson so I thought we were almost the same but yet I was very happy in forestry and I hate to have a double mind you know 
I wanted to focus in forestry, but it was forestry, and I wanted to focus on medicine, but it was medicine, so I kept praying unto God. It was a week of battle, and I felt like God wasn't speaking, and I had to battle it alone, but still I was trusting God that He would one day take it away from me, but it was too much for me. And the first person that I told after speaking with God about it was uh, my lady friend whom I came for messages with. She's currently re reading medicine in the school I am reading first grade in Millicent. Millicent AJ, yeah. Shout out to Millicent AJ from Science 4 in Agri Memorial High School. You know, I was a, she was the first person I talked with and she was like, have you told your parents? I said, no, no, no. I don't want to worry my parents about, you know, like this kind of stuff. They paid enough money. I mean, a lot of money for me to, you know, enroll in as a forestry student. And here am I going to battle them again. I said, no, I don't want to do that. So. We agreed and I went to see the counselor the next day. So I went to the counselor, but before going to the counselor, I remember we were having lectures and, you know, the teacher didn't come in, so her teaching assistant, you know, the lecturer's assistant, the teaching assistant came in and she was speaking in American slang and the boys were like, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, like so noisy. And I was like, guy, I'm lost, God. This is not how I pictured university to be, you know. In SHS, I read about Rutherford and I read about, you know, like science and maths. You know, we like to read about, you know, the scientists and all those stuff. You know, Rutherford was only a bachelor degree student. I mean, he was in the university and he and his, I think, is it Mazden and Gagamula, you know, his collaborators brought about the um, atom which those ball fitted up and that, you know, that kind of shell, the cycle cycle, which we use now to draw atom or to represent atom, unlike the old geezers, I mean, JJ Thompson and John Dalton, who, you know, talk about the plate with something like positive and negative stuck inside, you know, we don't use that anymore, and I don't think anybody used that actually, yeah. But we, you know, Rutherford's own, his alpha particle experiment was something that became profound in imaging, like, I mean, in projecting the idea of an atom so i was like you know i gotta be very adventurous in the university and here am i in the class and people are only like shouting here and there because they're you know a Ghanaian trying to speak like in american slang and you know i, I was just lost so i was sitting by the class prefects i mean we call them class rep here but in high school we used to call them class prefects i stood up and off I took my bag, you know, I took my bag and off I went to the library. My classwork was like, you know, you are skipping class and I was like, I just shook my head and I ran to the primary the second library about a kilometer away from my faculty and, you know, when I go to the library, I, bus I bypass the first section, I bypass the second section where, which is for the applied sciences, you know, forestry, engineering, the other programs. Then I went to the third floor, which was for and the health sciences student and that was my first time you know like going there to read actually even though i've been there just to walk around and i got there this one i went i went there with a purpose i was just gonna read about a human brain again because i felt like i was lost then the only book that i could reach was brain anatomy i read you know going through the books i was just reading fast 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 i just had that kind of feeling like I was like, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. It was a battle. So even reading from the book, I wasn't getting anything, but I was just, just moving faster, 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 just to get over the feeling of what was going in the class. Like, I'm, I'm gonna waste time here in forestry and what, what, you know. So fast forward, I went to the counselor the next day, just like Millicent and I agreed to do. And uh, the counselor's office, we spoke a lot and she was like, you know, sometimes what you are saying, it could be that, of course, you've gotta be in a research and, and also it could be a temporal feeling. So when she said that, she said, we should give it some time. We should give my feelings some time. And probably if it goes away, then it was something temporal. It wasn't meant to be, but if it remains, then actually then maybe I should consider, you know, going into medicine. And I knew what I was going through. And I knew it was something that wasn't normal. Already me coming into forestry wasn't something normal. I knew God had it his hands in this and he was up to something, you know. So I was I was more like, okay, 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 I've heard you. I'm gonna consider that. But I knew that I never accepted everything that she said. 
So I took my bag, I went back to the hostel and I kept praying, 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 praying to God. God, is it forestry that you want me to do it? And please let me do it. And if it is medicine, then please give me a medicine and let forestry go away. And of course, medicine did go away. And I became the happiest student again in forestry. I was joining more clubs. I was attending global meetings, like virtual meetings. I remember getting a ticket to attend the, um, you know, one of the meetings with Global Landscapes Forum in 2020, which was held in the bomb city of Germany. And God being so good, you know, I had no visa and also I had no mind for plane ticket, but it was actually virtual because of COVID-19. So I got to attend it and I was very happy, you know, I became the happiest student again in forestry. So I was pretty much good, you know, everything was going on well until um, second year, first semester. And then it sets in again. And this time I knew that God wanted me to go in medicine. This was the time for me to go into medicine. And that is how I kept struggling for the first semester, seeing teachers about me going into medicine. They helping me getting into medicine, transferring into medicine. And people suggesting, teachers are suggesting that I go do it in Ukraine or I go do it in Euros, not in Ghana here, you know. They, they gave some good reasons. And that wasn't pertaining to the grades, for the grades I had it. And even if I was to take external exams, I would have taken it. And it made a lot of sense to me that actually, um, I think the Lord didn't want me to pursue medicine in Ghana here, but probably elsewhere in abroad, you know. Yes, yeah, so, and that is how I got, you know, I got the idea last semester, that is in second semester. So it is more like a year, you know, it, it has been more like a year since, um, I got accepted to read pre-medicine in the U.S. You know, medicine in the U.S. is postgraduate, and you have you need a bachelor's degree in a pre-med program like biochemistry, biomedical science, neuroscience, you know, biology and chemistry programs. Even though you can come from the non-traditional way like politi political science, English, social sciences, you know, any of any of the arts, you can come from any program, but you have to take prerequisites. But I didn't want to take prerequisites. I just needed the, the knowledge in my pre-med, you know, like biochemistry, so I applied. Just like I told you in my other video, I applied and I got accepted to five universities. Even though right now I'm having four schools that I'm waiting for. You know, it was also in my second year, first semester, that I got to understand why God had to bring me into forestry for two years and I had to leave for medical school after the two years. You know, um, after the feeling set in in first year and it went away, I became happy in forestry. And during the COVID-19, when I, at the peak of COVID-19, that was I was in I was in um, first year, second that was the second semester of my first year, and we had schools schools were closed down, and we had to you know go home. So when we are home, you know. I, I didn't sleep like most people we usually did during vacation. You know, the next semester we are not going to do the same courses we are doing, so, and we don't know the courses we are going to do the following semester. So we end up relaxing, playing games, going out with friends, doing other works, you know. But I didn't do that. I was so in love with forestry, thinking of becoming the next CEO of Forestry Commission and bringing a lot of change, you know. So I was just researching, and I found out that. Um, Ghana was almost about the size of UK and and um, I wanted to figure out why UK have moved very forward and Ghana have moved for very forward. I was comparing their natural resources with our natural resources. I was comparing about you know their forests and what what brought you know um, like increase in their economy. What makes them superior in terms of economic wise over Ghana. And I was pertaining to, like, I was reading more about the natural resource side, you know, in the field of natural resources. And also, I remember, like, thinking about, reading about how I can, we can enhance carbon sequestration, like, in plant species, plant that could not absorb, like, let's say, two tons of CO2 in one year, but how can we facilitate that, like, how plants absorb more, like, sequester more carbon so that we could find climate change. And those were the things that I was doing and during those moments out of like rigorous research and you know reading a lot in my first year second semester at the peak of COVID when we were at home somewhere or the other led to me bringing up um, 
uh, an organization, a non-profit, it began as a non-profit organization called SOV, that is in Latin, Spes Orbis Villages, and translated into English as Hope for a Greener Planet, you know, um, Hope for a Greener Planet, or SOV, targets four main pillars of climate change, and actually, all in doing that about climate change, you know, yeah, I was actually thinking about it, it was a childhood dream that I had it. When I grow up, I'm gonna build like places for people to stay in for free, like those on the streets. And so I thought about Green Build. I got to know Green Build during those research, like during the COVID 19 peak, how we are shifting from the use of cement in building and using engineered woods to build sustainable house. You know, like LVO, laminated vinyl amber, is an engineered wood, which when you're using building, like making like skyscrapers like you know it's gonna increase the building's life from like a double fold whereas using cement you know cement concrete is very heavy and LVO is lighter and so you know when the buildings are very tall the weight alone reduces the lifespan of the building but with LVO which is lighter than concrete and also stronger than steel you know is able to increase the building span a double fold because you know concrete isn't as strong as steel but LVO is stronger than steel at the same time it's lighter than concrete and the most fascinating thing about it is that you know when you use engineered wood you also participate in you know mitigating climate change by you know the wood continue to absorb CO2 from the atmosphere and unlike cement which we wouldn't say we didn't do anything about cement you know i found out that cement the production of cement is the pollution of the atmosphere with co2 and actually if we really want to fight climate change then of course we have to you know find ways to stop producing co2 like you know reduce the production of co2 that is rich in net zero emissions but here lies the case we are fighting co2 at the same time we are building with cement producing more cement producing more concrete buildings that is it looks like when we light the fire, we pour water in. You know, we want the fire to burn, so we don't have to pour water in, but it looks like while we are lighting the fire, we are pouring, we are, we are sorry, 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 I said pouring, we are pouring water in, you know, and it looks like a cost 90 job that we are trying to do. So I decided I want to establish, you know, Green Build in Ghana. I want to bring about our policy, you know, like in Ghana, just like it's done in US. Uh, you know, for US, I've seen a lot of building that is done that way, but for Green Build, you know, big time buildings like I mean huge buildings, huge mansions, skyscrapers like in Finland you know there is a city in Finland called and Finland is called a wood city yeah because now they have adapted um, green build policies and I wanted to bring that and that is not the only thing I decided that when I build I mean my first one third of the buildings will be dedicated to those who are on the street the homeless just like I used to dream when I was a kid and I thought I was going to have, you know I thought I was going to accomplish that through engineering, but uh, when I got to know about Green Build and all the stuff that I did and I saw during the research, then I knew that this was the reason why God brought me into forestry. He wanted me to fulfill that dream. I mean, the idea that He left in me when I was a kid about you know helping you know the homeless and other people. There are there are more to SOV. The other three, I'm gonna talk about it later on in the other video. But in this video, I'm only talking about you know how like uh, God redirected me from forestry into neurosurgery, and that is how I got to know God wanted me to be a neurosurgeon. So when establishing SOV, that is in second year of first semester, and I realized that when neurosurgery is set in a game, that was when I started like, thinking about it closely. Why I've established SOV? So that is why God wanted me to be a neurosurgeon. And it was always positive, you know, God have a way of speaking with us. And I know the way God speaks with me, you know, that I'm so special now. No, I'm only a sinner and, you know, like a fool who go back to his sin, a dog who go back to his vomit, you know. But it is by the grace of God that, you know, like my life is being directed by him, you know, yeah. So me reconsidering that now, okay, so SOB was why I came into forestry. And I started thinking about the things that I told you before. 
remembering how instinct instinctively I was drawn to the idea of the brain, like reading about the brain in SHS and all those stuff. And my experience coming to the first experience I had even before I stepped foot on campus, uh, you know, to begin my academic coursework, that is going to my grandma's village and seeing that lady and me telling myself that if I was a brain surgeon, I would have digged into her head and, you know, fixed her so that she could lead a normal, like live a normal life just like anyone else. And I thought about the feeling that came on me when I was in first year that I didn't understand how it came about and I also think about how I met Ben Carter and got to know much about the story. Then I knew about my eye-hand coordination, my ability to think in three dimensions, you know. When I got to know about this, like my eye-hand coordination, I, I started playing the lead guitar, you know, like I started playing the lead guitar when I knew like I had a lot of eye-hand coordinations. I wanted to enhance it. And you know, that is one of the characteristics by the researcher, by the way, yeah. And also, uh, like my love for the microscopic world, you know, I love to think in three dimensions. But I, that is why I told you I like chemistry a lot. Like, you know, chemistry is, looks like chemistry is the center of science, and you know, you learn about the basis, you go into details. So, I love to dissect things like, let's say, this is a paper, I want to dissect into it to I get to the last point, and I want to know what it is made up of and all those kind of things like that was how I was since I was a child like going deep into details knowing how things are made and that was something that affected the way I studied in, in SHS and my teachers were like that will only help me in university but in, for the moment you know just like I said yeah you already know it like I always learn in depth when I read like I read about atherosclerosis sclerosis and I find another definition, I mean I find another word called arteriosclerosis and I don't understand how to look that word up until I get to the least where I understand everything. So that cut across everything. So I mean reassessing myself, realizing my eye hand coordination, ability ability to think in three dimensions and also um, all the experiences that I had about how I got into contact with the brain and the ideas of the brain and I realized that. God wanted me to be a neurosurgeon. He wanted me to fix human brain instead of fixing machines. So he gave me the ability to fix things, but not to fix machines, but actually to fix human beings. So it was more like I was thinking about fixing machines. Then I was redirected to fixing the planet. And then I finally got into fixing human beings. And I guess that is where it's gonna stop. I don't know, like maybe there are more adventures but I always say that my life is not my life. My life is the life that God wanted to be. You know, I don't have a story to tell because my story already has been written by God. I believe so. And I think that he is going to accomplish everything that he has written that I should fulfill. So I'm only an actor. I always say that I'm only an actor, like playing the role that God has already laid out, like laid down. That is why I want my life to be redirected by God. I'm making this video so that you guys, you know, would also consider, consider, I mean, acknowledging God, just like the Holy Scripture says, I mean, the words of God says that, you know, acknowledge God in all your ways, acknowledge God, and He will direct your path. This is how it begins, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and, in, and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. I'm not a perfect human being. But one thing I've realized is that the more I acknowledge God, the more I get into bigger things that I never imagined, you know, especially me being in this hospital, like volunteering in the radiology department, you know, I never knew. I wanted actually to volunteer in the library, but they decided to bring me to the radiology department. And here am I able to start my YouTube blog in this office. And, you know, it is something that the Lord directed me into. I didn't work for it, you know, I just took a step, but he redirected me and gave me something better than I was thinking about. And I'm always thankful to God that he gave me this idea of becoming a neurosurgeon. And I'm sure, I'm pretty much sure that um, this year I'm going to get to the U.S. Even if not this year, I don't know. I haven't paid my enrollment fees yet, but I know that these five schools that I've gotten, or even the four schools that are yet to give me admissions, I'm going to get to into any of them to begin my free medicine and I'll become a medical school very soon. And the only field I'm going to go inside is near surgery. And I'm looking up to God that He will fulfill that dream. You know, He will help me fulfill that dream. So, hey guys, I'm going to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. And as like always, be disruptive.